Um, today, I just want to talk about the basic properties of squares and rectangles. Um, we talked about parallelograms. We talked about rhombuses. We talked about trapezoids. Now we need to get uh, a little more specific to some finer tuning points. So we said uh, parallelograms. Again, quick review of just some basic things. You guys know that they have two sets of parallel sides, right? You guys know that uh, the opposite angles are congruent. You know that any two angles in a row make 180 degrees, right? You know your diagonals uh, bisect one another. They're not the same length, but they do bisect each other, right? So this and this one are the same length, and this and this one are the same length, and then we knew of, of some other things based off of that. But those are the real basic things, right? Um, we also learned that a rhombus was a specific parallelogram, and it had all those things true, um, except there were a couple extra things, that all the sides were congruent, right? Um, that not only did your... Your, your diagonals to bisect each other, right? But there's an extra piece of information was they made a right angle here in the middle, right? Uh, and we also found that your diagonals were bisectors. In other words, these two are the same. These two. Um, or this, I'm sorry, let me relay, relay those poorly labeled. Um, these two were the same. These two were the same, these two were the same, and these two were the same. Sorry about that, okay? So you had this uh, these extra little pieces of information now. So what I want to talk about today is some of the properties of rectangles, but what I want you guys to remember specifically is that all the things that were true about a parallelogram are still true about a rectangle. A square is both a rectangle and a rhombus, okay? So all the things that are true about rhombuses, all the things that are true about rectangles are going to get combined to make a square. And that's why a square is such a useful shape to us, right? It has lots of things that are predictable, lots of things that are very, very useful. So let's talk about some properties of a rectangle. There's not too many more to add. Um, again, all those things were true. Um, the one extra piece of information is this, is that you have four right angles. Okay. Um, what's important to remember is like a parallelogram, if you have the opposite ones, they are congruent, right? They still all happen to be 90. And if you take any consecutive angles, it still adds up to 180, right? 90 and 90 is 180, 90 and 90 is 180, okay? Um, the big extra thing we have to remember about a rectangle is this. Um, your diagonals... Um, in addition to bisecting each other, are actually all finally the same length, okay? So before, we said, again, this distance here was clearly much shorter than this distance here, right? This was kind of like the stretched out one. This was kind of squished together one. Here, they're all the same, okay? You have all, all these are the same, and so your diagonals are the same. So let's give these some names real quick. So I'll get it, we'll call it A, B, C, D, and I'm going to plant the middle here, P. E. So I know that AB, oh, I'm sorry, AB is congruent to DC, right? Same thing as we know. These sides are the same as these sides, okay? And then BC is the same as AD, right? Okay. What we know now, though, with the diagonals is the following. We now know that AC is congruent to BD, right? Your diagonals now are congruent. This line is the same length as this line. But on top of that, I also know this. That AE, sorry, I should put a congruent sign. I know you guys are all screaming at the screen right there. AE is congruent to EC. It's congruent to ED is congruent to BE. So all these, in addition to the whole diagonals being the same length, since they're all bisected because it still has the properties of a parallelogram, all four of these things are congruent to each other. Okay? Um, and again, like I said, that, that's the only really extra thing we have to know about a 
a rectangle. Everything else you already know from parallelograms, okay? So let's talk about squares. Now, what I just said, <laughs> oops, square, okay? Draw nice and big. Um, again, we said everything that's true about a rhombus is true about a square, right? And everything that's true about a rectangle is also true about a square. So let's talk about the additional things that we know. Well, we know your diagonals are the same length. And again, you guys probably know that because we talked about that with the uh, Pythagorean theorem and whatnot. Right? But we also know that it's also it's a rhombus, right? So these diagonals, so we do know now that AC is congruent to BD, right? But let's also go ahead and let's say, all right, well, this is a right angle here, right? So that's 90. So that means that these two angles here have to be congruent. Because remember, we said that all these are the same length, right? True story. Well, that makes that one in the middle an isosceles triangle, doesn't it? Which means that this one is the same as this one. Now, that was true for a rectangle as well. In fact, that's been true for a lot of our shapes. What the extra piece of information is, I know the middle angle. I definitively know because it's a rhombus that has to be a right angle. Here, depending on the shape of your rectangle, these middle angles will change. Because a square is a type of rhombus, we know that that's 90 degrees. Therefore, we also know this is 45 and 45, right? Because if we see this triangle here in the middle, it's got to be 45, 45, 90. And again, that goes to support our theory that these angles are bisected in a rhombus, right? That's what we said. So these angles are bisected in a rhombus, okay? So those are really the only extra nuggets of information you guys need to know that are new to solve some of these problems. So let's take a look at a few, and you guys can take a, take a loose. Just remember that I, I don't want to spend the you know the entire time going over the properties of a parallelogram of rhombus. You guys can go back and watch the old videos if you guys need a review. For right now, that's the only new piece of information we need to know. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. Quadrilateral H I J K H I J K is a square. What's the measure of angle GKH? So they want to know this angle right here. Well, again, we know it's, since it's a square that um, this is a 90 degree angle because a square is also a rhombus, right? And we also know that because it's a rectangle, your diagonals bisect each other and they're all congruent. So therefore, same thing that we just saw, these two angles have to be congruent. I've got an isosceles triangle in here, right? And what do I have to know? 45 and 45, okay? Um, the other way you can remember that, again, if, if you guys remember, in a square, the square is a type of rhombus. We also know that these diagonals have to bisect these corners. And you know in the square, you, again, well, something you guys should probably know about square coming in because it's a rectangle. These are 90 degree angles in here. Again, when you cut 90 in half, you get 45 and 45. All right. Quadrilateral B, C, D, E is a square. What is C, E? Well, they told you that F, E was 39. Okay. Well, I know if F, E is 39, this is a square. That this one's 39, and this one's 39, and this one's 39. Well, 39, 39. So C, E. Is equal 39 plus 39, okay? And uh, 39 plus 39 is 78. Okay? No big deals, okay? And we'll talk about it in the future where you can actually use that to solve for some of these uh, sides. Um, important thing to keep in mind, all squares are similar. There's only one square. All you can do is make it bigger and smaller, okay? Um, so a lot, it's a lot like a circle, any regular shape, okay? Uh, so quadrilateral R QRST QRST is a rectangle PR. So PR is 8Y and PS is Y plus 77. So again, what do we know about these two things? We know that all these are going to be congruent. Just set yourself up a little equation. 8Y is equal to Y plus 77. I'm going to subtract Y. 
seven y is equal to 77. Let's divide by seven. Y is equal to 11. Okay. Quadrilateral STUV is a square. What's the value of U? Again, one of the things you guys should have known coming in, all sides of a square are congruent. Again, let's subtract U. 5U minus 1U is going to be 4U. And U, U is going to be 5. U is going to be 5. Well, U is going to be 5. All right. Okay, quadrilateral D, E, F, G is a rectangle. D, F is 8V plus 80. E, G is 4V plus 96, okay? So what do you know about the diagonals of a rectangle? You guys know that they are congruent. Again, they would have to tell you that's a rectangle. They just said, hey, it's a uh, parallelogram. That is not enough information here, okay? Again, let's subtract 4V from both sides. 4v plus 80 is equal to 96. Subtract 80. 4v is equal to 16. v is going to equal 4. Make sure you, you solve. Here they're always asking for the variable. Make sure if they're asking you for how long these sides are, you plug the 4 back in to give it to them, OK? Uh, OK, and the last couple of questions they ask you, is this shape a rectangle? Well. Yes, I see that all of my diagonals are the same length. Yes. So, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this before, too, that there is the converse of these rules. We know that if it's a rectangle, then your diagonals bisect each other, um, and they are congruent. If your diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle. So is this a rectangle? Yes. Okay, it's a two-way street. Okay, so again, if it's a rectangle, then this is true. If this is true, then this is a rectangle. Okay. Um, is parallelogram G H I J a square? Uh, no, right? This is clearly just a parallelogram. So we know that these are 44 and 46. Um, therefore, I definitively know since my diagonals don't bisect each other, I mean that my diagonals bisect each other, but they are not equal to each other. It is not a rectangle since they are all not congruent to each other. It is uh, definitely not a square. Okay, so is this a square? No. Nope. Right? If we want to make this a square, we'd have to say something like that, where they're all the same. All right, is this a square? Again, no. Okay, so first of all, you know that these are not congruent to each other, right? But also, you know, in order for it to be a square, this has to be a 90 degree angle. This is not, it's, 90 deg it's 95 degrees, so no, this is not a square. Okay, is this a square? Yes, absolutely. This is 22. This is 22, this is 22, this is 22, this is a right angle. Yes, absolutely, that's a square. <coughs> and is this a rectangle? No. Clearly, your diagonals, right, 29 and 31, which means that this whole thing, 31 and 31 is 62, and this whole thing, 29 and 29, is going to be 58. So no, they are not... They're not the same length, therefore it's not a rectangle. And I think that's uh, that's all we got, okay? So give those problems a try and let me know if you guys have any questions.